It's a quiet day in Minneapolis. It would have been a good day to go thrifting, but the state of Minnesota is under a shelter-in-place order. So instead of going out, I went in to my garage to see if I could find something to work on. This old folding chair looked like a good project. I found it in a thrift store about a year or two ago, and it's been sitting in my garage ever since. It's not a fancy chair by any means, but there was something about the look of it that I liked. It has some structural issues, and it also has finish issues, but I actually like the look of the worn finish. So I focused mostly on the structural repairs and decided just to freshen up the finish a bit. I began by working on the seat. These joints at the corners were pretty loose and needed to be re-glued. The seat was secured to the chair by these metal straps, which were nailed into the side. I just had to carefully remove the nail. And I tried not to damage it because I wanted to reuse as much of the original hardware as possible. The back corners of the chair hang off the sides by these pins. They looked like they were maybe cast iron. They were pretty loose and I would tighten those later when I put the seat back on. Then it was time to disassemble the seat so that I could re-glue it. And the glue joints were already pretty loose. So it just took a few blows from a hammer to get it apart. After cleaning off any old glue that was left on the joint, I applied some new glue. and then clamped it up. Next, I moved on to the backrest, and this also needed to be re-glued. but I wasn't able to remove it completely from the chair because of that rod that goes through the top. One end of the rod had a head on it, 
like you might see on a carriage bolt, but the other end didn't have a nut on it. It wasn't threaded. It looked like the end had just been peened with a hammer, sort of like what you do with a rivet. It's hit with a hammer until the metal mushrooms out over that washer that's behind it, and that's what holds it in place. So to get that off, I would need to cut it, but I didn't want to do that because I wanted to keep as much of the old hardware as possible. I didn't want to have to replace this with a shiny new rod. So I just disassembled the backrest with it still attached to that rod, which worked out fine. And like the seat, the glue joints were already pretty loose, so it came apart easily. After cleaning off any old glue that was still in the joints, I applied some new glue and put it back together. And I didn't use clamps on the backrest. And this is because I didn't want to force it to be square. Uh, I just wanted it to take whatever shape felt the most natural to it. Because this chair, it's so old and nothing's really straight on it anymore. Nothing's square. And since this backrest is still hanging on that rod, that rod isn't straight. That's got a little bit of a bend in it. So I just wanted the backrest to take whatever shape it had been taking for decades instead of forcing it to be square and perfect because then it might bind up on that rod or on the legs when I tried to fold the chair up again once it was all together. So I just let it be as it wanted to be. The chair had a couple of dowels in the back. One of them was broken and the other one was missing completely. So I needed to replace those two dowels. To get the broken one out, I first tried heating it up a little bit with a heat gun to soften the glue that was in there but I still couldn't get it out. Even though it felt loose, it wouldn't come out. And it felt like there might be a nail holding it in. So I took a closer look and sure enough, there was a nail. And I see this all the time in old chairs. People try to repair loose joints by driving a nail into it. But this is a really bad way to repair a loose joint for one thing, the joint's usually still loose, even after the nail is in there. And then when somebody comes along down the line to repair the joint correctly with some glue, they can't get the joint apart because of that nail that's in there. And then you end up having to do more damage to the piece to try to get that nail out of there so that you can get the joint apart and get some new glue in. So to get this nail out, I took a Dremel tool with a small grinder attachment on the end and I removed the wood around the nail as much as I needed to. So that I could get some pliers in there and pull it out.
and once the nail was out, the larger half of the dowel came out easily. But on the other side, I first had to cut the jagged edge flush with a saw. And then I drilled into what was left of the dowel and cleared out as much wood as I could that way. And then I just took some carving tools and picked out the rest of the wood that was in there. Once the holes were cleaned out, I could glue in a couple of new dowels. And I went over the new dowels with some gel stain to darken them up a little bit. And the last step was to freshen up the finish a little bit. I liked the look of the original finish for the most part, but just wanted to tone down some of the wear a little bit. And to do this, I just took some clear satin wipe on oil polyurethane and just wiped on a thin coat over the entire chair. And here it is, all finished. It doesn't look that much different than what I started with, which was my intent because I like that old worn look of the chair, but structurally it's much sturdier. Thanks for watching.